Hey, what's going on guys, Darius here and welcome to a new tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at another much, much, much easier technique on how to use uh, certain softwares to make this kind of trippy animation from still images. I would really like to thank George Redhawk for having a chat with me and uh, pointing me in the right direction on making these uh, in a much easier fashion. Now we're gonna be skipping all the Photoshop and Sony Vegas editing, you know, that that's cool and all, but there's a much easier method using specific software. Now we're gonna be using some uh, morphing software. There are two that I thought were great. And the first one, which I think is the one that George uses, it's called Magic Morph and it's free by the way. So make sure to download. Well, it's kind of weird. You know, sometimes it asks me for some registration key and then the second time it doesn't. So it's kind of weird. So, uh, you know, just Google for, uh, I don't know, Magic Morph registration or something. Cause I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, their website is down. I don't think it even exists anymore cause the software is old. So <laughs> Phantom Morph on the other side is not free. It costs about $99, but it definitely has a lot more features. It even has uh, export to 60 FPS GIFs, which Magic Morph just doesn't have. The maximum frames you can go with Magic Morph is about 50, which I guess it's not that tragic. It just means that your animations will not be 60 FPS, but it's, it's fine. It still looks great. I mean, just look at George Redhawk's works. I'm going to be showing you Magic Morph today. So let me just close these images and uh, start Magic Morph. There we go. So a really important thing before starting this program. Okay, look at this. I mean, it's extremely old. It works fine, though. Don't worry. But before starting it, uh, grab the shortcut that you will make on your desktop or something. Right click and go to properties and please, for the love of God, run it in compatibility mode with uh, Windows XP Service Pack 2. If you are on Windows XP with Service Pack, Service Pack 2, then you're good to go. And uh, not as an administrator, it doesn't really matter. But please, Windows Service Pack, XP Service Pack 2, because otherwise the software is just gonna crash because it's really old. So yeah, uh, just let me just start the software. So down the next step is to go to New Morph and uh, select your source image and your target image, and they both have to be the same, okay? So the first image, I'm gonna go to my desktop and grab this image that I used before, uh, which is of Vin Diesel in his new movie. Now, I'm not sure who made this artwork, but he's good. So let's try to work uh, with this one here. So as you can see, we have uh, three copies of the same image. The last one is gonna be your outcome. And here you have a progress bar, okay? So uh, from frame one to frame wherever you set up, okay? So this is the beginning and this is the end. So you're gonna leave it, leave it in the middle, okay? That way you can see uh, the changes that it makes in the third image. Now this program is all about adding points. So for example, there are, we have a couple of options here. There's uh, this option here, which lets you add two points uh, on the first image and on the second image, it's gonna add it automatically. So if I click on uh, his head right now, the point is also gonna appear uh, on the head in the second image. So let me show you, uh, let me just undo that. When you add just one point, you can tell where the head should go. So if I click here, if I click on this option here, add control point in source image and target image in turn. So if I click uh, on his head right now, my mouse would automatically skip on the second image here. Right now I'm telling the software to take this point, his head and move it. If I click here on the hands, it's gonna move it to his hands, okay? so. The point is going to drag the head to his hands. I'm just going to go on my progress bar here and see how the image moves down. That's basically how the effect works, okay? So if I undo that, if I just make a slight variation, so I add a point, for example, here on, uh, let me just zoom in so you can see. If I add a point here on, the, on these branches and it skips to the second image, right? It's really good to be zoomed in in the second image too, okay? So select your target image and zoom in a bit so you're basically at uh, the same zoom level as the first one. So I'm gonna tell this point, which is around here, to go a bit to the lower left, okay? So see how the image right now, it goes to the lower left and it repeats itself just like that? 
So how do we keep everything still but just move the elements that we want? It's actually really easy and logical. So if I undo this, yeah, let me just undo those points. I don't need them anymore. So I'm going to click on this uh, add two points. So since the first point here, when I add it to the head, it adds it here too. This is in the same exact spot. So it's not moving that specific spot. If I move this point down, it's going to move the head down too. But since they are in the same position, this thing is going to stay still. So uh, I, I bet George doesn't use it as many points as I do. Or maybe he does, I don't know. But I add a lot of points. So for example, if I take his head with this two point option and just select just his head, right? It's going to add points. Uh, let me just put it on his head here too. Just add a random points inside. I think there's an easy way to do this or maybe you shouldn't add that many points, but whatever. This works for me. So now I know that this image has the points in the exact same position and it's going to stay still. So I'm grounding this image. Okay, I'm making it still. So when I go to add a point, you know, this one here. Now this one is going to apply the point here on one image. Okay, and the mouse is going to skip on the second image. So I'm going to go back to my branches now. Okay, let me ground more. Let me ground. Let me ground my two points here and ground this area too. you know, where his body is and with the sword and all. There we go. And I'm just going to like ground his hands and his chest and stuff. Okay. And now I'm going to ba go back to my one point. I'm going to click here where the branches were before. And then if, if I click right now in the same point, then the image is not going to move there. But if I click a bit lower to the lower left, then these images, these branches here are going to be dragged to the lower left where I added the second point in the second image, okay, in the target image. So if I go now and just move this timeline, okay, you can see the image, uh, you can see that the branches right there are moving, okay. So I'm going to do the same for this side, okay. I'm just going to grab my one point. I'm going to uh, move this image too. And then I'm going to click here on these branches and I'm going to drag these. I'm going to put the point a bit to the lower right. OK, so that means that the branches on the left side were moved to the lower left and on the right side to the lower right. I can also grab, for example, uh, I, I can ground this, uh, this this skull here. OK, so it doesn't get uh, so it doesn't get taken away by the movement. OK, so I just grounded it. I can also ground with the two point. I'm going to ground this circle here, this shield or whatever, or it's maybe sitting, sitting on a throne. I'm not sure. I haven't seen a movie yet. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to ground this skull too. So anything that we have inside here, I'm just going to add some random points. Again, I, uh, you maybe shouldn't add these many points. I don't know. I just go, I just spam them. So it, it works for me. I don't know why. <laughs> so, and now I grounded uh, the shield or I don't know throne whatever and the guy Vin Diesel right and a skull okay so uh, I'm gonna make the things in the background move a bit so for example uh, these branches here see on the corner let me just uh, move this image too and we got a lot of branches here so I'm gonna grab my one point click it here the mouse is gonna skip on a second image and I'm gonna move the branches I, I can choose which way the branches go okay so I'm, I'm choosing them to go to the far left okay so see how in the preview images are swapped, just change to the uh, to the left. And now I'm going to take, for example, the dress of this woman. OK, I'm going to click here with my one point and I'm going to make the dress go down. OK, so now the dress is going down the dress of the woman. OK, I can ground her face. I can move her hair. Um, what do we have next? Some branches around here. There we go. I'm going to move them to the left and I'm going to go on the other side. I'm going to add a point here going to indicate to the branches to go to the right side. OK, so you got to remember to use use your memory okay, to remember when you put the points because there is <laughs> a pretty there's not a straightforward way to just um, identify which points are which. So anyway, OK, so I know that this top side is going to the right upper right. I know that uh, my branches are going in uh, the position that should be, that they should be going. I'm missing a point here, so I'm going to add a point here on these branches and I'm going to move them to the top left. OK, so I'm going to check my preview now. This is my 
uh, morph image. Okay, this is the result. So make sure you have morph type, morph merge. Okay, so there's specific types of morphs here. You know, you can distort stuff, but uh, use morph merge if you want to do these kind of um, um, this kind of gifs. Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll around the timeline right now, and as you can see. The guy, Vin Diesel, and his throne are standing still, but the rest, where I uh, added the one point, and where I indicated where the branches and everything should go on your target image will move, okay? So, let's render this out, okay? I'm gonna go to Render Movie. Now, you can render it as an AVI movie if you want to. I always choose GIF Movie. The output frames are 30, okay? And the frames per second are 25. You can change this to anything until 50, okay? And the output file name is gonna be morph. You can change it to wherever you want. You can also change the location. Yeah, so I'm gonna choose GIF movie. I'm gonna click on render. And it's gonna save in the same location where your source image is. So this is gonna be my desktop. Okay, so as you can see, Magic Morph is definitely doing its work. With Phantom Morph, it would have already been done, okay? Which is why you're paying the $99 price. It has way more features because uh, Magic Morph is really outdated. It works, okay? It works, but it's really outdated and it's not as fast. So just, just uh, give it space. And a good thing that I found in Phantom Morph is that uh, the morphing and the looping and the GIFs and the movement, everything has a preview window where everything is in real time, okay? So I, there's a play button where you click play, click loop, and it shows you all the effects of what everything, what's moving and where it's moving and what's standing still and so on directly in a live preview. So I'm just gonna let this finish and be back to you with you guys in a second and we're gonna look at the result and how we can improve it. And we're gonna be using Photoshop to improve it. Okay, so as you can see, the image is now done. It will open automatically uh, when it's done. So this is a really high resolution image. So it's wallpaper sized. And you can also set GIFs as wallpapers in case you guys didn't know that, which is pretty cool. But I have a slight problem with the head here. See how it's just, uh, it's skipping a bit, okay? So I don't want it to skip, I want it to be more fluid. So uh, I need to keep certain elements completely still because this program is not gonna keep everything completely still, okay? What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab the morph that I just made, okay? So this one, I'm gonna just uh, add it into Photoshop. I'm just gonna start Photoshop really quick and we're gonna play around with some GIF animations, okay? So I'm gonna, let me just give me a second here until Photoshop loads. So when it loads, the animation it's gonna load it like this okay so one layer after another in case you don't have a window here with your animation go to window and then click on timeline okay so this is gonna give your animation timeline um, now you're gonna import the original image that you worked with okay so the original image of Vin Diesel I'm gonna drag it into Photoshop it's in a new tab over here and I'm gonna select all of it okay so either press Control and A on the keyboard and then Control and C to copy it and then uh, go here click on your first frame okay number one and click on the uh, layer number 30 here or wherever frame rate you set up okay make a new layer on top of everything and press Control V to paste or just uh, select select all and stuff like that and you know uh, copy and paste it over here and now we got this image on top here Which is still which is our original image So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a mask and now press Control and I on your keyboard And this is going to invert the mask. Okay. Okay So now this is an invisible layer because the mask is removing everything black inside of the mask removes everything that's uh, in this image so we gotta grab our brush tool and paint with white on the mask okay click on the mask and select the white here from your colors and whatever is painted with white it's gonna be visible again okay so if I play this animation it's gonna see it doesn't even see the image that's above everything so um, if I stop the animation and 
invert this mask again to white, everything is shown. So when I play the animation, this image is on top, okay? So nothing is moving because everything is behind this image. So just go to layer one, okay, to frame one, invert your mask to black, grab your brush tool, a soft brush to do or whatever fits your needs. Press Q on your keyboard to bring quick mask mode on or just click on this button here, which is the quick mask mode, okay? And now start painting the areas that uh, you want to keep completely still, okay? This is the area where your Im original image will show. So I want this throne and uh, whatnot to be kept still, his hands, okay? To be kept still. Now I'm gonna change the brush size to a bit smaller, a bit bigger, and I want the sword to stay still, okay? So over here, just like this. You could have done this if you want more accurate results. You could have added points, you know, the double points to uh, keep the sword still. That would be would have been more accurate, okay? Because it wouldn't take the sword as a moving subject, which would which well doesn't matter. You guys get it right now. So, <laughs> so we're still in quick mask mode, okay? I press Q again. I press Q to enter quick mask mode. And uh, this is not the red uh, color, don't worry, this is just the selection, okay? So, uh, what else? I'm gonna... Should I paint over the girl? Okay, I should have done this inside of Magic Morph. You know, added points to the girl here. But whatever, it doesn't matter right now. There we go. And on this girl too, so she doesn't move. I should have done this again in Magic Morph, but this is just a quick tutorial, okay? Quick. Well, I don't know what's quick. <laughs> and uh, okay, so when I press Q again, we have a selection right now, see? So if I go to select and then inverse, it's gonna select uh, what I quick masked. So now grab your brush tool, click on your mask, choose a bigger brush, okay, a way bigger brush with white, and start painting inside of the area that you just. Um, that you just uh, quick masked, okay? So as you can see on my mask here, okay, it's now white in that single spot over there where I select it. You can also go here, I think, to your uh, any any selection tool, really. Right click and then uh, fill. Should there should be fill? Okay, there's fill here, and then with uh, with uh, foreground color, which is our white, and then okay, and that should also fill in the image spots there. Now I'm gonna select and then deselect or press Ctrl and D on the keyboard. And now I know that this specific area that I quick mask is gonna stay completely still because this is a still image, the original image on top. So when I play the animation now, check that out. The head is not moving anymore. See where the girl was, where the girl is actually, it's not moving, but her dress is moving. That's pretty cool. Here, I did the same thing, but I forgot to mask her dress out okay so that's why it's going to the uh, to the right side to the lower right side so this is a pretty cool effect so once you're done with your image you know uh, you've obviously uh, invested way more time in um, in magic morph I hope you're gonna go to file export and then save for web legacy and when picking the format here, you're gonna select GIF or GIF if you wanna say GIF. I don't know what people use. So I'm using a, a black and white image here. So I, I could just leave the colors at 64 or something. Um, I'm just gonna go for 256, which is the max uh, color colors you can get as a GIF. Um, and I'm gonna choose the mode to, I don't know, anything is good here, but uh, I find adaptive better. No dither, okay, so really high quality image. And uh, it's gonna be 34 megabytes, I can see the size here. So I can save this as a moving wallpaper. You know, you can add GIF, GIFs as wallpapers, which is pretty awesome. But let me let me just make it smaller because I want it web sized, okay? I don't want it in HD. I don't want to use it as a wallpaper. So I'm gonna go for I don't know. The width should be about 700, I think, should be good, which is about 36% of the original image. 
the quality you can put it to either nearest neighbor or by cubic sharper so the image is uh it's pretty sharp okay so let it just uh, finish for a second so i can zoom in there we go this is at 100 percent zoom so it's pretty cool uh, the size is now 5 megabytes instead of 30 something megabytes and I can just save it here on the desktop as morph uh, VD okay so it doesn't matter save it as whatever you want to so when I go on my desktop now here it is and check that out it's playing perfectly uh, it looks good if I invested more time in it obviously I would have kept these monsters here but this is just to show you a quick method you know just uh, how to do these awesome things it's way easier and with Photoshop and liquify and uh, all that jazz but well Photoshop is still involved in keeping in keeping certain things still so yeah I guess it's uh, it's pretty good another thing that I noticed with um, with this software is that when, at certain in certain images you're gonna get uh, some sort of skip Okay, so once it reaches the end frame, uh, the canvas kind of moves just, just, just like, uh, just like pops into place. Okay, because everything moves. So this is why you should use uh, Photoshop to mask uh, whatever you want to keep. Okay, so see how uh, his head and the throne and his sword, whatever I added the quick mask, it's not moving anymore, which is good, which is what we want. That's how you do this with Magic Morph and a bit of Photoshop and uh, that should be pretty much now uh, you're just gonna add a lot of points okay so again I'm not sure if uh, <laughs> if George uses this many points um, but still it's uh, I think it's pretty good I mean it's it's a great software it's it's mostly intended for face morphing and stuff but I'm glad that George found a pretty creative way to use it so make sure to check out his works in the description as well as his social media links so i hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments um i don't know if you want to send me your work then you can send me on facebook uh follow me on instagram you can also you know like uh make some uh, sort of uh, video or something on instagram and send me the video and hey if you think i helped you somehow someday in some certain way then feel free to support me by checking out my Patreon page. I mean, you don't have to, but if you want, then go ahead. It's in the description, and uh, thank you very much if you do. So before you go, I just wanted to talk a little to you guys about uh, these mess headphones that I received, and I've been testing them for about uh, two months now, and I gotta say these are by far the best headphones I've ever had. The thing is, they actually started replacing my normal gear, which I use. So for example, my uh, Sony headphones, you know, that I usually use for my uh, PS3, you know, to just play PS3 games, or if I don't want to disturb anyone. They also replaced my uh, Razer headphones for gaming. Uh, they did just wrapped up and they're just gathering dust, which uh, was kind of surprising because these were my best headphones. So they are made out of wood and when I get, got them, I uh, got them in this really cool packaging and it came with a, an extremely, extremely cool uh, carrying pouch and inside, you know, I uh, also got this one, uh, these uh, replacement ear tips, which uh, I, I lost two of them, but I have a pouch which is full of them uh, from my old Beats headphones and yeah my Beats headphones they're just useless right now to me I don't know the quality just doesn't compare with the one that Mez has and uh, you also get this uh, thing you know so you can latch it to your belt or something or to your pants or to your uh, backpack and it's just really cool how it looks and the cable is braided and it it's really really sturdy the noise canceling is just so awesome on them and it has a cool logo here it also has this part here where uh, you know you can answer or close the call but I also use it to uh, th this button here I also use it to switch the music on my phone you know because I have this uh, shuttle app and uh, if I double tap it you know double press it then the music will change the, um, uh, the song 
and uh, yeah it just looks really cool with the logo here these headphones are really easy to untangle see I I'm not even trying right now I don't think I've ever had a problem with them tangling on me like ever because the ca the braided cable just keeps them apart the sound reproduction it's really really natural the bass is intense and the treble is also good so when you're listening to something it sounds just as it should so uh, really great sound reproduction uh, I definitely recommend you guys check these out so thanks for watching I will see you guys in the next video have a wonderful day